Okay. So, um, let's see. So, so mostly what I want to do today is I made a, a couple claims last time that I, that I decided I should actually prove. Um, and, uh, some of these are, are generalizations of some, um, some statements that we're familiar with in the algebraic topology of spaces, uh, to, to spectra. Um, so specifically, I want to talk about, um, the Horevich theorem, which says that if you have a, um, a map of spectra that induces, oh, sorry, I, I always get this confused with the other one. Uh, so this, this says that if, if X is zero connective, so in other words, um, the homotopy groups of X are equal to zero in degrees less than zero, then uh, pi zero X is equal to the zeroth um, homology of X with Z coefficients. Uh, related statement is the Whitehead theorem, which says that if you have a map of connective spectra, um, And uh, this map induces um, an isomorphism on, on homology. Then this map is, is an equivalence. Um, so it also induces an isomorphism on homotopy groups. Um, so these two statements are, are very closely related to each other. The first, the first one implies the second one. Um, and then the other thing that I sort of used last time was the, um, was the CUNY theorem for, um, for mod P homology. Uh, but really this, this sort of fits together with, um, with, with some much more general statements that you can make about uh, lots of different cohomology theories. So I, I'm going to kind of lump it together with the universal coefficient theorem, which I do know how to spell. And so these are meant to answer the questions, if I know about, say, the E homology of, of X, and I know about the E homology of Y, um, can I figure out uh, the e homology of their smash product. And likewise, if I know about the e homology of x, can I, um, can I figure out the f homology of x where f is some module over e? Um, so to make sense of this, we need to start talking about um, what it means for a, a spectrum to be a ring spectrum to represent to represent a multiplicative cohomology theory, um, and likewise, what it what it means for a spectrum to be a module over a uh, ring spectrum, um, and of these ideas are are important, like in lots of other contexts too. And and the way that you prove these theorems is is kind of a nice prelude to um, constructing the atom spectral sequence, which is where we're going in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so let me start out with talking about these two theorems about connections between homotopy groups and homology groups. Um, these are uh, so so these are generalizations of um, of some things that we already know about spaces. Uh, oh yeah, so I should I should review the term the terminology one more time. So when I when I say zero connective, that means that the um, the homotopy groups are zero in degrees less than zero. Uh, pi zero could possibly be non-zero. And when I say connective, um, I mean N connective for some N. So there's some N below which the homotopy groups are all zero. Also, um, what do you mean by homology of a spectrum? Right, so this is, so um, we've talked about the spectrum uh, H, the, the eilenberg maclean spectra, right? So there's the spectrum H, HR for, for any ring R such that um, its homotopy groups are uh, R in degree zero and zero in uh, 
other degrees. And so when I when I meet when I say the homology of a spectrum um, with coefficients in R, uh, what I mean are the homotopy groups of that spectrum smashed with HR. Okay. Um, so for example, if, if X here is a finite spectrum, then up to suspension, it's the suspension spectrum of a finite CW complex. Um, and then uh, this agrees with the standard notion of, of um, homology of that, of that CW complex with coefficients in R. Um, I don't know if we need to prove that explicitly, but I mean, I guess, I guess the way we would, I guess the way we would prove it is, um, is say that it's, it's definitely true for spheres. Um, and then see what happens when you, uh, when you take a, a cofiber sequence. Um, so any finite spectrum, you can build it out of some, um, series of cofiber sequences out of spheres and, each of those induces long exact sequences in homology, um, so that so so you get that the two notions of homology agree. Okay, um, so so let me start by proving the Hurevich theorem. So this says that that pi zero x is is h zero of x with coefficients in z. Um, both sides of of this uh, have suspension isomorphisms. Um, so more generally, if I have a spectrum uh, X, which is N connective, which has its lowest homotopy group in degree N, then it's pi N is equal to its HN. So, and uh, this theorem is actually a consequence of a more general statement. So uh, generalization of the Harevich theorem. Is that if I have two if I have two zero connective spectra x and y, then pi zero of x mash y is equal to uh, pi zero x tensor pi zero y. Okay, so this implies the Hurevich theorem because if we take um, y to be hz. So this is a zero connective spectrum. Um, and what we get is that pi zero of x tensor, uh, sorry, smash hz is equal to pi zero x tensor pi zero hz. And pi zero hz is just z. So this is, this is the same as pi zero x. Okay. So, um, so the way that we're going to prove this um, is similar to some arguments that we made the previous time. Um, so let's let's consider the class of all spectra X for which the theorem is true. So, um, so let C be the class of spectra X for which the statement is true for all y. So first of all, the, the zero sphere is in C. Um, And sorry, when I say all y, I mean I guess I mean all zero connective y. Uh, um, second, C is closed under under coproduct. So if I have some um, If I have some x, which is a coproduct of, of spectra xi, and I know that the theorem is true for the xi, um, then I can consider uh, pi zero of x mash y. This is equal to 
pi zero of the coproduct of EXI smash Y. Um, the, the smash product distributes over the coproduct. Um, this is because it's a left adjoint. So, so we can rewrite this as this. Um, and now pi zero means homotopy classes of maps from S zero into this. And so that means that we can pull out the coproduct. So this is equal to the coproduct of homotopy classes of maps from S zero into XI smash Y um, by the induction hypothesis, this is uh, equal to this. And now the tensor product distributes over, over um, direct sums. So this is uh, the same as uh, direct sum of pi zero xi, all tensor with y. And finally, by the same argument, direct sum of pi zero xi is equal to pi zero x. So all that we're using here is, is the fact that the smash product is, is with y is left adjoint to something, um, which, uh, yeah. Um, and so as a result, it, it preserves this, this sort of co-limit. Um, finally, let's say that, uh, that we have a cofiber of spectra in C. So we're going to show that C is closed under cofibers. And this is really the exact same idea. I mean, a cofiber is a homotopy colimit. And so um, the point is just that the smash product distributes over it. Um, so let's say that we have two spectra x1 and x2, which are in our class C. Um, and we have some map from x1 to x2. And let's call the cofiber Z. OK, so we have a cofiber sequence that looks like this. And we can smash the whole sequence with y. Um, and smashing with y preserves colimits. So this is still a cofiber sequence. Um, and now let's take the long exact sequence of homotopy groups. Um, and let's notice that uh, Y was assumed to be zero connective. X1 was assumed to be zero connective. Um, so, the, so this spectrum is one connective. So we have a map from this to pi zero of suspension x1 smash y, uh, but this group is actually zero. So uh, this piece of the long exact sequence of homotopy groups looks like this. Um, and now we can write these as, um, as tensor products, again, using the hypothesis that x1 and x2 are in C. And tensoring with pi zero y is right exact on abelian groups. Um, so the, the co-kernel of this map is equal to uh, pi zero x2 tensor pi zero y mod pi zero x1 tensor pi zero y. And by right exactness of the tensor product, this is the same as pi zero z tensor pi zero y. OK, um, so uh, one thing that you'll notice from this is that if we started caring about the higher homotopy groups of this, we would have to start thinking about um, about tor of the of the various uh, homotopy groups with each other. And, and that'll show up once we start talking about the um, the CUNY theorem. OK. Oh, I think I still need to say a sentence. OK, so we've shown that that um, C contains the zero sphere and is closed under wedges and cofibers, and so therefore it contains all zero connective spectra. Uh, so any zero connective spectra can be built out of spheres of uh, out of out of non-negative dimensional spheres by by wedges and cofibers.
Okay. Um, so that's the Hurevich theorem. Uh, the Whitehead theorem is a is a pretty easy consequence of this. So. So for the Whitehead theorem, um, let's say we have a map. of n connective spectra for some n. Which induces inducing an isomorphism on homology, on integral homology. Um, and let's write Let's write F for the fiber. So we can extend this to a fiber sequence like this. Um, and what we want to show is, is that F is contractible. So F is equivalent to a point. Um, we can suspend this this sequence however we want. Um, so uh, without loss of generality, we can take n to be equal to zero. Um, so now we have a map of zero connective spectra, um, which with the property that this map induces an isomorphism on on homology. Um, but in spectra, there's there's a there's a long exact sequence on homology coming from this fiber sequence. So we have this long exact sequence uh, like this. And this map is an isomorphism. So therefore, the homology of f is equal to uh, 0. Um, so uh, but also, f is a 0 connective spectrum. Um, is that right? Yeah, f is a. No, sorry. Uh, I, I guess the most you know is that f is a minus one connective spectrum. But in particular, it's an it's an n connective spectrum for some n, and so you can apply the Hurevich theorem to it. And the Hurevich theorem says that its um, its lowest uh, homotopy group is the same as its lowest homology group. So if it's if all of its homology groups are zero, then all of its homotopy groups also have to be zero. Um, so by the Hurevich theorem, uh, pi star f equals zero. So f is equivalent to a point. OK. Um, at some point, we might talk about uh, Bauss field localization. And um, one of the more kind of like highfalutin ways you can say this theorem is that uh, connective spectra are HZ local. So you can detect whether a map of connective spectra is an equivalence by looking at what it does on homology. Um, and this is not true for all spectra, but it is true for connective spectra. Um, so let me give you an example of how this theorem can fail for non-connective spectra. And I'm not, I'm not going to prove this, um, but but maybe we can prove it later if you all want to. Um, so if you take if you take the complex K theory spectrum and you mod out by P, so there's a multiplication by P map on this. Um, then the integral homology of k mod p is equal to zero. Okay, so this is a this is a non-connective spectrum. It has um, it has homotopy groups in every uh, even degree, positive and negative. Okay, um, any questions about any of this? Okay, so um, the next topic uh, that I want to talk about is um, is ring spectra and module spectra, um, and there, there's kind of a lot to say about this, but um, I'm going to mostly stick to what's in Adams's blue book, which is a which is um, sort of what's necessary to set up the Adams spectral sequence. And as we've talked about in Adams's blue book, he sort of only knows about the stable homotopy category. So um, he gives a definition of these concepts that that 
just requires the stable homotopy category to uh, to to deal with. So um, so here's his definition: uh, a ring spectrum. Um, is a spectrum E which is a um, which is a monoid in the stable homotopy category. So it's equipped with a multiplication map and a uh, unit map um, and these have to make certain diagrams commute and we'll always assume that our that our ring spectra are um, are associative and unital in the homotopy category so um, so you all have probably seen diagrams like this a million times but but in case you haven't, uh, here they are. Right, so this diagram is supposed to say that the multiplication is associative. And, um, and it's supposed to be unital. So if I have E, this is the same as the zero sphere smash E. I can apply the unit to, to S0 to get something in E smash E, and then I can multiply back to E. Um, and likewise, I could do that on the other side. Uh, Okay, so um, right, so so these diagrams are supposed to commute up to homotopy. Um, if we want to be more precise about the kind of ring spectrum that we're, we're talking about, we would say that this is a homotopy associative ring spectrum. So it has it has this multiplication that's associative up to, up to homotopy. Um, it also has a unit, but usually we don't mention that explicitly. Um, we'll say that a ring spectrum is homotopy commutative. So E is homotopy commutative. if this diagram commutes up to homotopy. Where this map is the map that you get by swapping the two factors. Finally, we'll say that M is a uh, module over E. And maybe if we're in the non-commutative case, we might want to say something like left module. Um, if there's a multiplication map uh, new from E smash M to M um, that makes the appropriate diagrams commute. Um, so again, this is supposed to satisfy appropriate associativity and unitality conditions. Okay. So um, what does this structure give you? So there, if you have this structure on a spectrum, then um, there are a bunch of uh, products that you get on the homology and cohomology theories that the, the spectrum re represents. Um, 
And I'll write down a, a couple of them here. So, um, so if E is a ring spectrum, then there's a product on homology that looks like this. There's also a product on cohomology. Um, and there's also a pairing between homology and cohomology. So if I have a, um, a cohomology class uh, of X and a homology class of X smash Y, um, then I can pair the X part of this homology class with the cohomology class over here to get, um, to get something in the homology of Y. Um, and you should think about, um, you should think about cup products that you know about in, in um, cohomology of spaces. And I'll, I'll make that more explicit in a second. Um, the places that these come from, so let me, let me take this one, for example. Uh, so, um, so the way that we reconstruct this is uh, E upper KX is maps from suspension minus KX into E. Okay, so if we have a map from suspension minus kx into e and a map from suspension minus ly into e, um, then we can smash uh, we can smash the source with the source and the target with the target. So um, so this gives us a map from this tensor product to uh, to this. So let's see, there's a, there's a map from um, the Cartesian product of these two sets to this, just given by the fact that um, the smash product is a, is a homotopy functor. Um, the fact that it extends over the tensor product uh, means that it's, it's bilinear. So um, if you add together two maps here, then, then you add together their, the, the images here. Um, and this has to do with the, the smash product distributing over, um, over uh, sums and uh, sums of spectra. Um, but so in any case, uh, once you've done this, you can use the multiplication map to get something um, in here. And we can rewrite this as something in suspension uh, maps from suspension minus k minus l of x smash y into e, um, which is e k plus l of x smash y. Um, right, so I'll, I'll leave uh, constructing the other two up to you. And if you're interested in, in, um, in more things like this, there's a whole bunch of them which are written down in the blue book. Um, let me say a few other things about this. So, um, so one is that let's suppose that E is commutative, uh, by which I mean homotopy commutative. So if E is um, a homotopy commutative ring spectrum, then these products are um, are what's called graded commutative. So going back to the product on cohomology, um, if we have a, uh, maybe I should, let me call this product M, I guess. So if I have a if I take um, this product 
or let me say it like this. So, um, so there's an isomorphism where I, I switch the two factors in the tensor product. Um, there's a map, there's an isomorphism where I switch the two factors in the smash product. And this diagram commutes up to a sign of um, minus one to the k times L. So the reason that this is true, um, so, so do, doing these, these switches amounts to switching these two factors here and switching these two factors here. Um, since the product is homotopy commutative, switching the two copies of E doesn't, um, doesn't do anything to the product. Um, and the only thing that you have to worry about is switching the two suspensions. Um, and basically what happens is that uh, you have to, to use an isomorphism from um, SK smash SL to SL smash SK, which has degree minus one to the K times L. Okay. Again, this is a thing you're probably familiar with from the from the cup product in ordinary cohomology. Um, what else is there to say? Oh yeah. So there, there's a few um, special cases of these products which are worth pointing out. Um, coming from uh, when one of the so let's take um, one of these two spectra to be the sphere, for example. So we get a map from E k of the sphere. tensor EL of X to uh, EK plus L of sphere smashed with X, which is the same as EK plus L of X. Um, this is the same as pi K of E. And so what this says is that the E homology of X is a graded module over pi star E. Um, likewise, if we do the same thing on cohomology, so if we start uh, with this multiplication, um, well, E upper K of S0 is the same as pi minus K E. Um, and so this tells us that the E cohomology of some spectrum X is a graded module over pi star E with the degrees reversed. Okay, um, this is a bit confusing. I mean, we should have, you know, if someone gets a hold of a time machine, we need to go back and tell them to, to make the, the cohomology uh, degrees negative or something like that. Um, but we're kind of stuck with it. Uh, right. Okay. So, um, let, let's, let's give some examples. So first of all, the sphere spectrum, um, is a, uh, homotopy commutative ring spectrum. As we've talked about, there are um, symmetric monoidal model categories in which uh, the sphere spectrum is um, the unit. So it's definitely a commutative monoid in those categories. And so it also is in the homotopy category. Um, if R is a ring, then the eilenberg maclean spectrum HR is a ring spectrum. And it's commutative if R is. Um, now, the easiest way to see this is um, is is to work in one of these uh, symmetric mono symmetric monoidal model categories. So, um, for example, I think I think Sean mentioned this a, a couple uh, weeks ago. Um, 
there's a really nice construction of these of this spectra in symmetric spectra. Um, so we have the symmetric spectrum. which at um, the, the nth space of the symmetric spectrum is you take the simplicial n-sphere and you take the free R module on that. Uh, I'm gonna write this with um, curly braces instead so it doesn't look like a, like a polynomial ring, but um, so this is the free simplicial R module on the simplicial n-sphere. Um, and then it's possible to check that this, that this object is a, is a commutative ring in symmetric spectra. Um, and I'll get back to this in a second, but, this, but being, a, being a commutative ring um, in, in a symmetric monoidal model category is a lot stronger than being, um, than being just a commutative uh, monoid up to homotopy. So this is um, so this is like one of the ways you can prove that um, that the, these eileen bergman McLean spectra are like highly structured ring spectra. Um, but in any case, I would rather sort of assume this for now and not and not go into the details about it. Um, another example is if X is a spectrum then you can think about the function spectrum from x to x. And this is a ring spectrum where the multiplication um, basically tells you to compose the functions. So this is like endomorphisms of an object in the category. Um, so the, the k-theory spectra are, uh, are commutative. Um, and finally, let's say that E is a ring spectrum and X is a space. Then uh, the function spectrum from the suspension spectrum of X into E is a ring spectrum. The multiplication is as follows. So starting with these two function spectra, we can we can smash the source and target, um, giving us this. The source of this is the same. Sorry, I'm like writing without thinking. Uh, the source of this is the same as uh, the suspension spectrum of X cross X. And now we can apply the multiplication on E, giving us maps into E. And we can apply the diagonal map on X. Um, giving us something out of X. So this is uh, pull back along the diagonal map and push forward along the multiplication map of E. Um, so uh, this is one way of thinking about the, the existence of cup products on the cohomology of spaces. Um, they come from the fact that the cohomology theory that you're working with is multiplicative, but they also come from the fact that, um, that spaces have these diagonal maps. And when you're reading Hatcher or something and he's constructing the, the cup product, um, he has to say something about, um, about uh, what this diagonal map does to cohomology in order to actually construct it. Um, so this gives, you, uh, this gives you maps like, um, yeah, this gives you a, a cup product on the cohomology of a space. Okay, 
Um, so I want to talk about the universal coefficient theorem. Uh, maybe let me briefly say that, um, like like I was mentioning here, there's there's uh, there's much more structure that you can ask for um, on a spectrum than than just being a uh, homotopy commutative or a homotopy associative ring spectrum. So for example, you can ask for it to be represented by an actually um, an, an actual commutative monoid in some symmetric monoidal model category of spectra. Um, and uh, and part of the reason that um, that these symmetric monoidal mo model categories were developed in the first place was to to enable people to talk about this. So an example of, of the of some stuff that the up to homotopy category won't let you do um, is, I gave a definition of modules over a spectrum, but what if we want there to be a model category of modules over a spectrum? What if we want to say uh, there's a space of maps in between these two modules over E? Um, so it's not it's not really possible to do that using using the definitions that I gave you, and you have to do something a bit more sophisticated. Um, and we can talk more about that if people want to talk about that. But for now, I'm just I'm just going to work with this up to homotopy uh, set of ideas. Okay, um, so, so now we want to talk about the universal coefficient theorem and the Kuhner theorem. And what we'd like to do is make statements of the following form. So let's say uh, E is some ring spectrum. And M is a module over E. Then there are spectral sequences. Which tell you how to compute um, how to compute the M homology of some spectrum or the M cohomology of some spectrum uh, out of the E homology of that spectrum. Um, so I'm writing I'm writing M upper star here. This is both M lower star and M upper star mean the the homotopy groups of M. But just um, here they have the the grading coming from the fact that they're homotopy groups, and here they have the opposite of that grading. So um, let's let's look at a few special cases of these spectral sequences. Sorry, is that also what the E star means? Uh, oh, yeah, E star. Yeah, I should I should be writing this down, shouldn't I? So. E star is pi star E, M star is pi star M, uh, M upper star is pi minus star M. Okay. Um, and these, since we're talking about graded, uh, graded modules and graded rings, there's a, um, there's a degree here that comes from the, the Tor degree or the X degree, and there's a degree here that comes from the internal degrees. Um, and those those both contribute to the degree of the of the um, of the final result, the E infinity page of the spectral sequence, um, in ways that I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but I'm consoled by the fact that, um, yeah, it in my experience, like you have to kind of do these yourself to to understand how they work anyway. So. Um, it maybe wouldn't be so useful for me to for me to tell you uh, at this point. So um, so the, here are a couple important special cases. Uh, so first of all, let's let's suppose that E star X is projective over E star.
So that means that the, the second spectral sequence, um, and also I guess the first spectral sequence, um, have no, uh, no terms in higher cohomological or higher homological degrees. Um, so both spectral sequences uh, are just concentrated in P equals zero. Um, and so they collapse at the E2 page. And so we get that, um, what, that M upper star X is equal to maps over E star of E lower star x into m, uh, m upper star. And likewise, m lower star x is uh, e lower star x tensored over e lower star with m lower star. Um, if we don't know that, that uh, if we know that e lower star x is flat over e lower star, then we can, we can make the second one of these statements. Um, an example to the example, is let's say that E is HFP. So um, the, the mod P homology of any spectrum X is, a P, is an FP vector space. Uh, so this is always flat over, um, over E star, which is just FP. Uh, sorry, always flat and projective. So these statements are always true, um, and these these recover the uh, the 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 more standard versions of the universal coefficient theorem and the end of the Cunha theorem. Um, oh, and in particular, um, uh, let's. Let's take the following case. Let's say that M is um, is E smash Y for some spectrum Y. Okay, so this is always an E module. Um, the reason it's an E module is that uh, you can you have a multiplication map given by just applying the multiplication on E and doing the identity on Y. Okay, so this is always this is always an E module, um, and uh, taking the the Tor spectral sequence, um, what you get is a spectral sequence starting from um, Tor over E star of E star X with E star Y, and converging to the E homology of the smash product. Um, again, going back to the HFP example. Uh, we, as we said, this this collapses. This is concentrated on the zero line and collapses. So you get that um, the mod p homology of X tensored the mod p homology of Y uh, is isomorphic to that. Is isomorphic to the mod p homology of the smash product. Okay, so um, so th these are a couple examples of, of how um, how how the, the spectral sequences could be used. Maybe another one we're thinking about is if if E is H Z and you're trying to compute, say, the H the H F P homology of X out of its out of its H Z homology, um, then you get a spectral sequence uh, whose input is um, yeah, you, you, you get a version of the of the universal coefficient theorem. Um, yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, these spectral sequences do not exist in the generality um, that I've said. So there have to be some special conditions on uh, 
on E and M in order to make these actually true. Um, and one way of thinking about this condition is that it sort of, if we want to construct the X spectral sequence, then there sort of have to be um, enough projectives to, uh, for example, resolve E star X. Um, and likewise, if we want to construct the tor spectral sequence, there, there have to be enough flat modules. Um, and uh, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to write down a condition under which the, under which the spectral sequences exist. Um, and this is called the Adams condition. So since I, I'm not going to get done talking about this today, you should look at section 13 of the, of the blue book. Um, or uh, chapter two or three, I forget which one of uh, Ravenel's um, book, Complex Cohortism and the Stable Homotopy Groups of Spheres. Okay, so the condition is as follows. Um, e is a filtered uh, homotopy colimit of finite spectra E alpha such that If we take the um, the natural map, uh, sorry, such that for any E module M, if we take the natural map from um, uh, maps, homotopy classes of maps from the Spanier Whitehead dual of E alpha to M. To what these maps do on E star homology. Then this is an isomorphism. Um, I forgot one part of this, and such that E star D E alpha is a finite projective E star module. Okay, so like I said, I think that you should think of this condition as sort of saying that there are enough finite projective modules. Um, and the way that it gets used is if we want to construct, say, the universal coefficient spectral sequence for some spectrum X, um, we resolve it by mapping a bunch of these uh, duals of E alpha to it. Um, and then we can sort of use this isomorphism to, uh, to, um, to construct the spectral sequence. Um, so uh, let's see, I, would, I have a little bit more time, so I... I'd like to at least start doing this. Um, although I'm not, uh, I don't think I'm Can talking about Can I make a quick way. comment? Yeah, sure. About this isomorphism. This is like exactly what you use very frequently when you're building a spectral sequence to show it computes the actual thing. You have a resolution that you want to approximate something. And then on the left-hand side, you have actually maps of spectra. So like this is, super important is a super important property to have that you can identify anything like this yeah yeah thanks that that's that's a really helpful comment yeah so we want to we want to compare some sort of algebraic um stuff with some actual maps of spectra and and uh and the point is that there's some there's some class of spectra on which this um on which this compares and works really simply um, I guess, so the, the other thing that we should mention about this is that for a bunch of spectra E, which we care about, this is actually true. Um, so uh, so this, this condition holds for um, the sphere spectrum 
uh, mod p homology, um, ku, ko, um, and I think next week we're going to be talking a bit about about um, cobordism theories, and it also holds for the for the basic cobordism theories. Do you know a theory where it fails? Um, I think it fails for HZ. Is that right? Uh, I don't know. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. I think it. I think it fails for HZ. Although I forget. Yeah, it would be nice to have a, a good like a good counter example of like how this spectral sequence can exist, but. But yeah, that is well. The the Kunis spectral sequence exists for HC. Yeah, that's a good point. I think the universal coefficient one might as well. I would imagine because the universal coefficient theorem is true, and uh, it is just sort of like the degeneration of the spectral sequence of the one line. So I I don't know. It yeah, just I don't know. Does, does like, I don't know any it? example of yeah. where it fails. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait, me sorry. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Um, right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm trying to think of like what, what it would be useful. Maybe since I only have a couple minutes left, I should, I should just ask you all for, for questions or comments instead of, instead of trying to prove some difficult theorem. Um, so we can we can come back to this set of ideas once we once we talk about the atom spectral sequence. I don't know if you can hear me. It's pretty loud mm -hmm. here, but is is there a clear reason why you need the, the spinier whitehead duals kind of in this this last uh, condition? Yeah. So. Um, since since these are finite spectra, um, when you see like this this homology of a finite of the dual of a finite spectrum, this is the same as E upper star, the E cohomology of E alpha. Um, so it's possible to uh, and and likewise we could rewrite this. So we could write this as um, homotopy classes in M smash E alpha instead of maps from D E alpha to M. Um, and this is E upper star D E alpha. Um, so it, it's possible to say this without without saying the Spanier Whitehead duels. Um, the reason that the Spanier Whitehead duels come up is so so the the point of this like like what you end up doing with this is is you end up saying that. Um, that uh, for any finite spectrum X, sorry, for any spectrum X, um, there's a surjection Sorry, I'm getting a bit a bit confused. Um, there's there's a map from some spectrum of the form. Uh, Some some big wedge of um, of suspensions of these dual E alphas to X, uh, inducing a surjection on E star. And the the fact that you you see the duals appearing here sort of like. Um, it comes from the way that you prove this theorem. So the, the, um, like the the thirty second version of it is that uh, if you have a class in E star X, um, then since E is the homotopy colimit of these E alphas, uh, this is really a class in some E alpha star X. And this is a map from some sphere into. E alpha smash X, which is the same as a map from um, some suspension of a DE alpha into X. So any class in the homology of X can be can be turned into a map from one of these 
from a suspension of a DE alpha in, into X. And if you do that for all the homology classes, then you get um, you get this spectrum that you're looking for. Um, and this is sort of this is how you construct these resolutions. You you map the spectra in, you take the fiber, and so on and so on, and, and that gives you the resolution. So in particular, the left hand side of the condition that Paul wrote down with this argument in mind implies that the spectral sequence you write down is exhaustive or rather that it sort of sees everything, right? Like you might miss some classes and there are spectral sequences that do, but this ensure the thing Paul was saying along with this ensures that uh, you don't. Yeah. I don't thanks. know if that yeah. makes sense. Maybe that's incoherent. And just more about getting the spectral sequence to sort of do the right thing instead of having like enough projectives, or is it kind of both? Or... I think it's both. Yeah. Uh, you, so you don't just, so the condition, Adam's condition is not just that the category of E star modules has enough projectives, that's a homological condition or algebraic one, it's that when you subject, when you map a projective onto something, you can realize that as a map of spectra. So that there's actually something geometric that it corresponds to, which you sort of a priori don't know. Yeah, I never thought much about this condition before, but like I needed exactly something like it at some point. Yeah. So. I, yeah. I mean, one way you could think about this, maybe if you let M here be E smash X, then this says um, for any map from an E star D E alpha into E star X, I can realize it at least from as a map from D E alpha into E smash X. I'm not sure if that clearly. Yeah, exa right exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because those are the examples of modules that you want to resolve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a weird condition, though. Um, it seems really weird and artificial, but I think you've explained it pretty well. Like, it's, I don't know. I think there's a lot of this stuff with spectral sequences that just, like, doesn't make sense until you've, like, yeah, fucked around with them a lot. And, like, there's these conditions that um, Boardman talks about in his conditionally convergent spectral sequences paper. Mm -hmm. which is just helpful for organizing your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like, what does it mean for a filtration to be exhaustive or complete or house or for whatever? Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, yeah. It's also weird because these are not spectral sequences that we use ever. <laughs> like, yeah. Except, except when they collapse. Um, but somehow, I mean, this like like the way that you construct uh, like this spectral sequence is is very similar to the way that the atom spectral sequence is constructed. It's the same. I think you even use this in constructing the atom spectral sequence, right? I, you you at least use the resolution. I mean. Um, do you, do you actually use the spectral sequence too? Uh, I think you might want it to collapse. Like, you, I think you use like a, right? You want E star E to be flat as mm -hmm. an E star module if you're doing mm -hmm. this with the coalgebra. Mm -hmm. So then you need the Kuna spectral sequence to collapse, mm, okay. or you want the, the you want the Kuna spectral sequence to collapse so that you can identify the homology of all the smash products with the tensor products of all the things. Right, you have a geometric yeah. and an algebraic cobar resolution, and you want them to be the same. And that happens when you have flatness, when the Hopf algebra is flat. And that's because the Kuna spectral sequence collapses. So we're going to be getting back to that in, um, I think, three weeks. I don't remember who's who signed up to talk about it, but. Um, but whoever it is, maybe we can we can say a bit more about you know, how, the, how this condition gets used or, or uh, how the atom spectral sequence is related to the, to, to the Kuna spectral sequence.
They're causal dual. Oh yeah. That, I mean, that is a word that I have never understood. Um, and, uh, uh, one is a bar construction, one is a co-bar construction. Okay. Uh, sorry, I don't know if I'm just saying <laughs> things. Yeah, so, so are there any other uh, questions or comments?